everybody, Dave from Dave Specialty Foods here at our awesome display kitchen and we're going to uh, just keep rolling with another awesome video. If you've seen any of our other, uh, other videos or if you've been to our shop and had our food or if you've had our like family meals we've been doing lately or just stepped in and say hi, we love you all. Thank you for your business. And um, this is gonna be a great one. I'm really looking forward to this. We're gonna make a, um, a Jacques Pepin recipe actually. I did not even change anything on the recipe, except for maybe the type of chocolate, but this is Jacques Pepin's uh, chocolate souffle. And I love this chocolate souffle because it's easy. And I think a lot of times, you know, you watch some cooking videos, say, yeah, just make it and whip it up and you can have chocolate souffle for your guests. And you just think of trying to come up with a souffle that you have to pull out of the oven. It's gotta be perfectly puffed up and you gotta put powdered sugar on it with your little powdered sugar shaker like this. And you don't have one. And, I don't have imported chocolate and that kind of stuff. Um, well, this recipe, when I found this a couple years ago, I said, man, I'm latched out of this. And I have made this almost last minute sometimes where hey, I need to think of something. I have guests coming over in an hour. Um, I'm gonna make this souffle because it's really easy. So this is gonna be a realistic thing that you can do at home, even in your oven and make it work without any fail. And you don't have to make any fancy custards or anything, which is usually the case with the souffles. So this is gonna be really easy. Uh, lots of cream, lots of sugar, lots of chocolate. What can go wrong? Uh, and we're also gonna make it uh, here with our avocado. We're gonna make uh, a, a really fresh season. We're gonna do a little something different with the avocado where we actually season it. A lot of people just take avocados, they slice them and they put them on toast and it's avocado toast. I think there's a lot of missing to that recipe idea. So we're gonna make a little seasoned avocado, seared tomato and bacon, uh, applewood smoked bacon, little mini slider sandwich on these evil, uh, uh, I have them over here, my, my Hawaiian rolls. We're gonna do this curry cauliflower soup, little touch of fresh dill. Um, we're gonna make it vegetarian. The recipe that I'm gonna be sending and attaching to this video uh, actually has chicken stock in it. We're gonna use veggie stock, um, mostly uh, because Maggie, the, the, the producer here, is, got, is vegetarian. And so I like to cook a lot of soups, especially vegetarian. So when we're done with the demo and the cameras are off, we can chow down at this awesome soup. Let's fire this up. So welcome to the video and uh, let's go on here. Some of this you can kind of follow along and stop as you go. And I think it, they work pretty well. So we're gonna try to show you real time kind of how this goes. So we're gonna start with the souffle. Number one, because uh, it, it, it's gotta cook in the oven. And while it's baking, we can carry on with our soup, which is fairly quick. But once the souffle is done, we'll pull it out, probably while the soup is going. And why we probably don't see this too often at dinner parties is you, when you, when it's, when you put it in the oven, you have to make it and put it in the oven kind of while people are finishing their dinner, you know? So we're gonna tell you about how to prep that so it's ready to go. So all you have to do is turn on your mixer or, or hold your mixer and have your friend or your sister or brother or something uh, whip up your whites and it's gotta go in the oven. And then when it comes out of the oven, you have to eat it right away. So that's the only hitch, which is to me not a big problem because you didn't have to do a lot of cake baking during the day or making a cheesecake or something like that. Here's what we're gonna begin with, okay? So, and I like to start, usually when I'm making a cake or especially a souffle like this, I keep holding this ramekin here. Get your vessel ready. So if you're making a cake and you have a little cake pan or you have an angel food cake you gotta make or you have um, uh, muffins or, I don't know, cupcakes, get that little tin ready because it's off your brain, it's finished. And when your batter is done and it's nice and light and puffy and airy, you can plop it right on into your pan and you don't have to think about, oh darn, I gotta fix that pan or we gotta butter it or I gotta spray the bottom or something. So I've just got a little pastry brush here, nothing too fancy. I mean, a lot of times you can, this is kind of a fancy one. This cost me about 25 bucks. It's made with special brush hairs that don't kind of peel off like a cheap paintbrush. But just go and buy a paintbrush at the store. Just wash it off, don't put it in the dishwasher, wash it off in hot water with soap and just leave it with your spoons and your, and your tongs. You know what I mean? And that little spoon, that wooden spoon holder by your, by your stove. You might only use it a couple times a year, but it's there and you have it, okay? You don't have to spend 20 bucks, but um, just a good five, seven dollar paint, little paintbrush that's got good hairs in it. When you pull on them, they don't come out. You know what I mean? That would be a drag to have a cupcake with a brush hair in it. We're gonna take these little ramekins. These are about, well, you can see the size here in my hand. These are about three inches across. We're gonna just brush the inside and all the way up to the lip like that with butter. So you can see I've done these, okay? So we're gonna brush the inside and we're gonna really go, this is very soft butter, this is not hard butter. And we're gonna really load it up in there and go all the way to the top and even get that lip, okay? We've got six of them here. My, my recipe, I think, makes either six or eight, but six is gonna be good for the demo here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some sh regular sugar, okay? We're gonna fill one of these with sugar. Here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna just roll the sugar around in our little souffle mold 
until it completely covers it. So pretty generous with the sugar in it. But we're just gonna do it over each ramekin. You see how I'm doing this? And we're gonna dump the extra sugar in there. You see that? I need a little bit more sugar here. Okay, and we're just gonna roll it around. We're just gonna let the sugar fall into the other ramekins. Okay, make sure you get that lip up there, okay? We're gonna do two things at the same time here. We're gonna turn on our little uh, cream. This is how you're gonna do this at home. You're gonna make these little ramekins, do them in the morning, I don't care. Don't leave them in the sun, but just leave them out. And uh, don't leave them in the fridge. Just put them out where the cat's not gonna get to them. You can measure your cream right before your guests get there and just put it in a pot, little pot like this with a whisk and just leave it on the stove. Just don't worry about it, it's gonna come to room temperature, it's not gonna be cold, but you're gonna boil it anyway. Leave your cream ready to go on the fire, so all you need to do is turn it on. I've broken four eggs in here, so I've got my four egg whites. Now, if you're gonna whip egg whites, and you're gonna ever make anything like this, a meringue type uh, topping, you need to make sure two things happen here. You need to make sure when you break your egg whites, that there's no yolks in them, because that's fat. You can't have any fat in here. And you also have to have a completely dry bowl. This bowl cannot be just washed. You have to dry it out crazy with like two different towels. Very important, no fat, no water, and you will have a nice, within about one minute, nice, perfect meringue. It won't take long at all, okay? What we've done is we've broken our egg whites here, and we're gonna just put it in our mixer. I have a KitchenAid. So if you if you got a KitchenAid, great, because I can just walk away from the thing and turn it on. If you've got a, a mixer, like a hand mixer, great. You're, you're gonna do the same thing, put it in a bowl and, and leave your egg whites out. Just let them sit out. They can sit out for 10 hours. Nothing's gonna happen to them. They'll be perfectly fine. And they'll actually whip up lighter and airier if they're room temp, okay? And the reason you're gonna do this is because you wanna make souffle for dinner while your guests are eating dinner. So you get up five minutes early, turn on the machine, turn on the cream, and that's all you need to do. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn on our, our machine here and crank up our egg whites, okay? If you've done this correctly, there's no fat and no water in here, this will only take about a minute. For those of you that have done these egg whites before, and you're stirring for 15, 20 minutes, and you're just not popping up, it's because your bowl, I bet you, your bowl was wet, or you got a little bit of yolk in there, or there's a little bit of butter or something, some fat in there. So no fat, no water. So we're gonna let that whip. It's already halfway done. We're gonna take our chocolate now, okay? I've got now, and this is actually four ounces of little Belgian chocolate, okay? This is a very, very high-end, very expensive, good chocolate. That's all I ever use. If I'm gonna make chocolate souffle, I'm not gonna use uh, chocolate chips, okay? So you at least need to use something like Giordelli's dark chocolate. Just at home, you can't get imported Belgian chocolate, I guess. You can even go to Walgreens or something and get a really high-end, uh, like a lint chocolate bar, like a movie theater chocolate bar, and it'll say right in the package, four ounces. You don't even have to measure it, just break it up and put it in there. This is gonna be about half a cup of chocolate. We boiled our cream, we're gonna dump our chocolate in there, okay? We're gonna make kind of a ganache here. This is called a ganache. So the chocolate, see the steam coming up in there? The chocolate, we're just gonna mix it, see how kind of ugly and kind of barfy that looks, okay? We're just gonna let that melt. Just let it be, let it melt. Look at my, look at my little egg whites. Look at that. that, that literally took one minute. They're perfectly puffed up. There's nothing in here, it's just egg whites. But look at how stuck they are to the bottom of that bowl, okay? So, nice, don't lick it. Okay. Or if you lick it, don't let anybody see. Okay, so, we're gonna turn this on low now. And we're gonna take sugar. Here, we're gonna take, uh, I think I have a quarter cup of sugar. Not much, but a quarter cup of sugar. My chocolate's just sitting here, and our quarter cup of sugar is gonna go right in here. And the sugar, it's gonna make a shiny little meringue, okay? It's gonna turn this into kind of a, from kind of light and airy to kind of a little bit stiff and shiny, okay? And really smooth, okay? That's all we need. This is basically your souffle mix right here. Look at how sexy that looks, okay? You got, even, look at that, how, how peaky that little peaky is thing there, okay? So that's a proper meringue, okay? We're done, this is it. This is easy, you guys, you can do this. Everything was measured, you turned on your machine, you, you put your chocolate in your hot cream, and we're done. This is it, okay? Nothing, uh, when I made this first time, I said, this is gonna suck, this cannot possibly be good. This is kind of Susie Homemaker type uh, recipe, but it's not, it's amazing, okay? Doesn't mean you can't be Susie and a homemaker and still make great food. We're gonna take a bowl, okay? We're gonna take our, where's our little spatula? All right, we're gonna take our spatula, dump our chocolate right in here. Because you have to, now see how hot that is? You have to fold this in. Now you see where I'm talking about, where your ramekins are already ready to go? We're gonna fold our eggs into here and we're gonna bake it. And it's it's that quick. And uh, this will only take about, I don't know, 12 minutes in the oven. It's totally worth it, okay? So we're gonna take about half. 
okay? So we're taking about half. Now what we're gonna do is we wanna fold because we want the souffle to be airy. So, but before we fold, we have to take this heavy chocolate stuff and fold it into this light, puffy, egg whitey stuff. So let's just kill it. I say just, just get it mixed in here, make it a little bit light, okay? So see how I'm just kind of mixing this in there? You got these little balls of, of egg whites in here? So what we do is we take our whisk and we just, see how those little egg white balls are in there? We just run our whisk through here, okay? This, this is against all rules, but you have to do this to make this smooth. Now we're gonna add the rest of our egg whites in here. See the rest of our, our half, half of the egg whites, okay? Now what we do is fold. So we wanna take this and just roll this over the top. See this? Just roll this over the top and you wanna keep the air. You don't wanna bang the bowl around. You wanna keep as much air in here as possible so that this doesn't collapse in the oven. You want this to puff up very nice, okay? So that's it. I wanna stop. That was about seven or eight times around. You can see there's little egg white kind of chunks in there. See that? I'm okay with that. So we're gonna ladle this rather than trying to pour it in here. See how the ladle just preserves the air in the souffle, okay? So we're gonna go right almost about nine tenths full, okay? See what I'm doing here? Look at all the mess on the tray. Don't worry about that. This is what cooking is all about. If you handed me a souffle that was perfectly clean, everything, I mean, I guess I'd expect that if I was paying 300 bucks for dinner, but at home, I wanna see a little bit of this, okay? I wanna see a little bit of guts on there. So this is gonna go right in the oven, 360 on um, uh, convection. You wanna make sure that air is blowing so it, the, the air blows the heat and it just puffs these up. And these are just gonna puff straight up, okay? In the oven. Our souffles are in the oven. Uh, we, we're doing that first just for this demo here, but you know, it's gonna be something you're gonna do last while, like I said, while you're just finishing dinner. And I would suggest that that, that recipe that I gave you makes six, exactly. I wouldn't go more than that. If you want to do eight, just double the recipe and you know, just make them a little generous and chuck the extras, okay? Uh, certainly something I would definitely uh, uh, suggest and, and, and attempt to try. Let's do short, you gotta do this because you're not gonna get that in restaurants, right? Um, very few French restaurants are still around that even offer souffle, so kind of a treat from the past. It's retro, but you know, that retro stuff's coming right back. Okay. While that's going, we're gonna get our curried cauliflower soup going and this is, this is fairly easy. Now we've got a, a couple things to start with. Uh, but we do need to bake the garnish and we, we want to roast some cauliflower because I, I don't mind eating a pureed soup, but I like little chunks in there of like if you're having a carrot soup, carrots in there, or cauliflower soup, let's put some little bits of cauliflower roasted in there. Got our full head of cauliflower here. Let's cut this right down the middle, like that, okay? Nothing special, okay? Uh, we just kind of chop it right in there. Now I've got the center of the cauliflower here. You see this? What, the way I do this is I kind of chop around this center piece here. Don't try to angle cut it out of there. It's pretty easy and just let those florets drop and you got this whole chunk of centerpiece. Really not a lot on cauliflower you can save on this part, even for soup. Broccoli's a little different like that, but cauliflower is pretty woody and hard. You're gonna chuck that, okay? Let's get as close as the middle as you can, because we do we do want to save that middle part, okay? Well, if you see it like I did, you get a couple leaves on your on your cutting board here, you just scoop them on the floor like I did. <laughs> Don't do that. So we're gonna take a little cauliflower, okay? And what I'm doing, is I'm just letting these fall, letting these fall apart, kind of kind of how they come up, how to, how they naturally break apart, and we're just gonna cut. I don't cut cauliflower at the top. If you cut on the top, it looks all squared up. Okay, we're just gonna cut it on the bottom and break it. See that's how I break it like that. Okay, and we're just gonna make these little baby kind of florets. I don't make them too small, but that's okay like this one here. So we're gonna make a few of these little florets for garnish in our soup. Okay, see what I'm doing with this? We're gonna take our little florets. We're gonna put them right in a pan. And I'm gonna roast these in the oven. Okay, I'll put a couple more in here. We're gonna let these roast in the oven. We'll put a touch of olive oil on here. No salt. No salt goes on any vegetable that you want to roast and get a little color on it. Because even cauliflower is as kind of dry as it seems. It's full of water and if you put salt in it, water comes out and it boils rather than roasts. So we wanna put a little bit of, we'll put salt later, you'll see this. And we're gonna put, uh, uh, so this is kind of recipe within recipe. This is how I am gonna garnish the top of my soup with these little bits of kind of crunchy, soft, and the inside roasted cauliflower with the with the creamy soup. And this is how you can just roast cauliflower. I mean, roast cauliflower is the big thing now. When we roast this, this is actually gonna be just plain good side vegetable for uh, any type of uh, dinner. So let's go in the oven. Same oven as the souffle. This will only take about 10 minutes. So let's take the rest of our cauliflower with our cauliflower dust 
And now we can kind of get in and chop it. Do you notice the other one? I didn't chop it, remember? Okay, you didn't see that on the camera. What you saw was I went into the cauliflower like this and I pulled it apart and it cracks apart. Can you hear that, okay? When I get in there and I crack it, see that? It makes the cauliflower not look so square. Now this is all square. This one's kind of just got a little bit of a little touch of roundness to it. Okay, so we're gonna chop our cauliflower just because we're gonna puree this anyway. So we don't really care at the moment that it is chopped like this, but we need it all about the same size so it cooks relatively at the same time. You don't want cauliflower little bits that are take one minute to cook and cauliflower like that that takes 10 minutes, you're probably not gonna have a fully cooked soup, okay? What I've done now is I've made a little hot heat in my pan. I've got a pan, nothing in here, okay? So I can feel this is pretty hot, but we're gonna take some onions. I've already chopped some onions here. So I, I believe your recipe is half an onion, I'll check that. What is a half an onion? Just play a little common sense. If your soup has a little too much onion, it's gonna be fine. If it doesn't have enough onion, it's gonna be just fine. As long as you've got some good amount of onion. Now there's no butter or oil in here yet. We're gonna add that. We're first gonna start out with simply adding our vegetables to our pan. You can hear it sizzling already, so I've got some heat in here. So we made the pan hot, and in we go with our veggies, okay? Nobody else does this. It's not that weird, but it's very different, okay? And I'm gonna show you why, because I can get a lot of heat in here. I can prepare, even if I'm chopping my onions right here and throw them in here, the, the pan is getting hot, and, and just let it, let it stay hot. I'm not gonna freak out about it yet. It's sizzling, but we'll add some oil. We're gonna put some garlic in here, okay? Now you have, make sure you use, you see my garlic, look at that. It's fresh garlic that I've chopped, okay? I, I either hand chop this, or I put it in a little uh, a chopper, one of those pushy choppers, or even a blender, just, just two little pulses in a blender. But I use fresh garlic. If you've ever seen me do any demo in the last 35 years, I have always been railing against that garlic that's chopped in the oil that you buy. That's garbage, don't buy it. I'm telling you right now, it's not good stuff, okay? It's, it, you're missing out on that beautiful, fresh, sweet flavor of raw garlic, not chopped, pre-chopped garlic. Let's add just a little touch of olive oil. I don't know if it says in your recipe, but I'm gonna do just a touch of olive oil. And a little bit of butter, okay? So I've got my little nub of butter here, okay? See how I just cook real? Just Put your, put, look at how hot my spoon is. It's just melting right off my spoon, okay? Then we go with the butter. Let's let that butter melt, and the butter is going to enable us to add some flour in here and make a roux in here. We've got a high heat right now. This is just coming to a pretty nice uh, uh, simmer. All my butter's melted, and my veggies are starting to kind of, I guess I'd call that wilted at this point now. They're not browning yet, but they're coming. We've got our veggies cooking. We just checked our souffle. Now I am a big proponent and always advise people if you're, if I told you, I think I told you 15 minutes on this souffle. I'm gonna set the timer for 10 every time I go less because you never know what's going on in there. My souffles, I'm pretty sure they take about 15 minutes. I set it for 10, we check the buzzer and now we know we can see, I don't want them to burn knowing that the oven was too hot. Pull those souffles up because I think they're done. Check this out. So some flavors would come out. Look at this. See how they puff up? These are uh, will be, you're safe to serve these uh, for about probably four minutes, okay? After that, look at how this one puffed up. That's, that's what I wanna see. I wanna see this. I wanna see this puff up here. This one just kind of blew up out of here. Let's hit this with a little bit of powdered sugar. Okay, look at that, you guys. Amazing, okay? When you dig into the inside, it's gonna be so hot. See the steam coming out of there? It's just so hot. When you dig into the inside, look at how perfect the inside is. What you have is the outside stays kind of cakey and the inside's like mushy and that's the part that burns your lip. <laughs> this would be great after a burger or a steak dinner. Just keep it simple and make a souffle. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Yeah. We've got our, our cauliflower soup. Now we can calm down, we got our souffles done, all the stress is done. So we've got our little veggies cooking with our butter. And you see how I, my garlic, look at my garlic. See how it's browning? If you use that garlic and oil, it burns. It will always burn every time. You guys know what I'm talking about. What adding the fat later, you know, we add the veggies and then you add the, the, the olive oil and the butter, you add it on top. So you're not starting with the butter and kind of browning it and burning it and then adding the veggies. We're starting with dry veggies and adding butter on top so number one, it doesn't splatter on us. Number two, the butter melts kind of slowly so you can really cook this and you're not burning your butter or your garlic. And your garlic is really mint small. And I put it right in the beginning and it's just coming very nice. 
Now add a little bit of roux, what this is called, okay? So we're making a soup that's got a little bit of thickness, but not too thick, and that comes from adding flour. If you're gluten-free, you can do a rice flour or a, a quinoa flour. Or a, so we're just gonna scoop out about a, two tablespoons of flour, okay? That's probably all I need, maybe, maybe, maybe three. We're gonna call it three tablespoons of flour, okay? I don't really follow the recipe as far as amounts go here. I'm just cutting up some cauliflower, adding it to some soup. This is the way soup should be. If, it's hard to measure an onion. An onion is big and small. Cauliflower is usually pretty standard shape. Celery is long or short. How do you measure celery? So I kind of just kind of wing it. You like a lot of garlic? Great. You don't like garlic? Don't use the garlic. You don't want any thickener at all and you want a light pureed soup? Fine. Don't add the flour. Soups are very forgiving like that. So what we're doing now, I've got a wooden spoon here. See how it's kind of got a little angle on the top? Any wooden spoon is fine. But you can get into the, to the corners of the pan and you can see now I'm browning a little bit in the pan. See that? See my flour is starting to cook and I want to cook the flour. You ever, you ever warm up soup the second day and it's all gloppy and thick because this flour is still trying to thicken and cook. We want the flour to cook in here. It changes the flavor, gives it that depth, the technique. So this takes about a total of real time now. This is about maybe minute and a half, okay? And that flour is starting to brown nicely on here. See all kind of dry sizzle. Let's add some stock to stop it cooking. We've gotten all that brown stuff off the bottom that was kind of scary there for a while. It was like, oh my gosh, it's burning, it's burning. Let's wash it all off. That's called deglazing. We've got, what we pulled out is our cauliflower. Remember that cauliflower that I put in there raw with a little bit of olive oil, look at the olive oil. Look at how browned it is. You're not gonna get that if you have salt on it. So now let's put a little bit of salt on there. We sprinkle, look at that, we sprinkle salt on there. Now, we've got our vegetables cooked. We've got our roux in there. We're gonna add our cauliflower right in here. Once you add the cauliflower, this all these little biblets, put all the biblets in there. This only takes, I don't know, as soon as it boils, it's almost done, okay? Very, very quick and easy. We're gonna add some uh, vegetable stock. See, my, my, my roux is nice and looks like it has a nice texture to it. A little bit of curry here, okay? A little bit of this, see how that yellow curry in there? Okay, that goes in. Okay, so recipe wise, we're good. I've got a little bit of nice texture in here. It smells amazing. Let's give this a stir. And we're gonna let that boil hot and hot. I'm gonna get it boiling hot. We're gonna set our little veggies aside here. We're gonna get our nasty griddle out now, you guys, okay? See how we cook this in stages, okay? We've already tasted our dessert. Our soup, this is done. I'm a big fan of when I make soup. See how, see how I started with that garnish? It's done. The soup's done. All I need to do is puree this and serve it. I need to add some cream and some uh, dill to this. I, it's on your recipe, but, but that's gonna come at the end. But it's all done. I, I'm gonna taste it. Maybe we need a little salt. So let's go on to our little slider sandwich. We've got this nasty pan. Uh, shout out to Kathy here, uh, who uh, was actually chucking this, and she knew it was a good pan. This is actually a very good, I think it's a Calphalon pan. Uh, it is awesome. It's really a nice griddle pan, okay? Kind of like a kind of like a pancake griddle pan. When I do avocados, uh, I always, and you can see how I kind of added another board here. I always just, just try to have one of these little mini cutting boards. A lot of people have these and you never use them. It's really nice to do avocados on because if you do avocado on the cutting board, your only cutting board, it trashes it. You got green goop all over the place, okay? So we're gonna round out avocado. Peel it open. That's a beautiful avocado. It's perfect, okay? All right. Poke it. There's our little avocado. We're gonna give this a little slice. See how it's already green and goopy on this board here? Okay, give your avocado a slice, we're gonna fan it up. Here's what I'm talking about. Just a plain avocado. Avocados are great. Cauliflower is great, okay? Uh, banana's great, okay? But sometimes you need to remind it how good it is by just seasoning it a little, just a little bit. I want it to still taste like avocado, but I want an awesome avocado. So here we go. A little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of olive oil, okay? Get a little janky with the olive oil. Make sure it's a little lubed up there. And a little touch of this Cajun spice. Okay. Now, as much of a mess as it looks like, this avocado is smoking good, okay? Much better than just plain avocado. Smear that on your toast. Call me up. Tell me how cool I am. So, you got a nice tomato, local tomato, okay? I just want to get down to the, the meat of the tomato. We want to cut these a little bit thick here, okay? So we're gonna cut these tomatoes. Look at how nice and juicy, look at how juicy that is, okay? We're gonna do something against the rules here now. We're gonna season this and cook it right away. But here we wanna season this and sear it so it kinda of burns this salt in it. So we're gonna get our, our little uh, uh, pan hot. You can use like a saute pan or a griddle, like a pancake griddle pan, okay? Now if you season this and you're gonna cook it, you need to do that right away because the longer, see I'm gonna season it with a little salt. The longer the salt sits on here, 
this, this cutting board in about two minutes will be full of water from the tomatoes juicing out. You wanna keep the juice in there. So let's put a little Cajun spice, like we have in the avocados. We got our pan hot, we got our fan on up here. Let's put just a little touch of olive oil on here. And we're gonna take our, our seasoning uh, Cajun spice, we're just gonna flip it on there, just let that sizzle a little bit. When you put some in a hot pan, don't drop it. Okay, this is super hot, but I'm getting within a half an inch. Make sure you hold out your tomato, and look at how we just walk it in. Walk it in on the dry part, see that, and slide it into the olive oil. Let that just sear. It's gonna get a little bit hot, but we're, we're gonna, this'll take like 30 seconds, 20 seconds. And we're not looking to soften them and cook them. We just wanna sear and get a little bit of browning on the top. Just gives it a little bit of earthy, dark, char flavor going on. You know? I didn't move these a bit. Don't go moving these, okay? Let them sit, let them kind of char. Oh, let's take a peek at what we got here, okay? Look at that, okay? It's got this nice little char to it like that. I like that. I'm good, okay? Let's take our bacon, okay? Bacon, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, I cook my bacon flat. I'm gonna warm this up a little bit and make it crispy. In the oven. We're just gonna use a package roll, okay? No big deal. This is a no-brainer. Let's take our roll. You can toast this if you want. Fine. All right, we'll toast it. This will take one minute. Remember our tomato pan? Look at our tomato pan with all that nasty stuff on there. Okay, look at that tomato pan. It's got the olive oil. I just did it. Roll it around a little bit. Look at that. Mmm. That's disgusting, but good. Okay. Simple. Done. Okay. We've got a little, a little, oh, they smell great. We've got a little brown bits. And I've got this, um, on your recipe, you're going to notice I wrote spicy mayo. And we make ours here. Okay, so I've got a mayonnaise here uh, that I've just mixed with a roasted pepper. So I took a roasted pepper, I pureed it in a blender, and I added some mayonnaise. Really simple. Put a little bit of, of this. Uh, it's not spicy. It's a roasted pepper mayonnaise, so it's kind of zippy, but it's certain it's more sweet than spicy. Okay, tomatoes are base. Look at that. Here goes your avocado. Don't be cheap, you guys. Okay. Here goes your avocado like that. Okay. What are we missing? Bacon. Let's check it out. Crunchy bacon. Which one am I? This one here. Okay, bacon goes on there. This is simple, but but got a little bit of complicated factor in it, but it's so awesome, okay? Let's see how this tastes, okay? Look at the color, I love it. Mm. Mm. That's amazing, mm. All right, that was amazing! Okay, our lives are changed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of just get a knife here and just cut in. Look, it's so soft. It's like it's not, eh, it's not mushy, but it's pretty darn soft. It's falling apart pretty. Good. That's been about probably 18 minutes. Okay, it's still boiling. Now we're gonna add a little cream, heavy cream. Okay, don't be cheap here. Remember I said non-fat sucks. Okay, you need a little bit of a juice in your life here. Okay, so add a little heavy cream. And to be honest with you, I'm gonna finish with a little bit of swirl of olive oil on the top because I think it makes a nice smoothness. The olive oil has flavor. It really has a nice little finish to it. And we're gonna finish this with dill, but not yet. We're gonna puree this now. What we're gonna do, it's boiling. I'm happy with that now. And I've just got enough texture. See how, that's, see, how, see how it just kind of falls off the little blender? So I'm gonna kind of make, I'm gonna turn the pan here so I get a deep well here. And we're just gonna start mashing it up, all right? I'm pretty good cook. 10, 20 seconds, okay. All right, great. Now remember our cauliflower chunks? All right, we've got those on the top here. We've got our soup, has a nice, nice color to it. Bon appetit. I hope you, you keep cooking and I uh, hope you learned a new technique or two and um, you have to do that souffle. See you next time.